The U.S. military central command has said Iran enabled attacks on an American warship and other commercial vessels in the Red Sea on Sunday. The Pentagon said the USS Kearney shot down three drones in self-defense. Several commercial vessels were also targeted. Yemen's Houthi rebels have claimed responsibility for two attacks. They say they will keep up the attacks as long as Israel continues its war with Hamas. It's not the first time the Houthis have fired at targets in the Red Sea or on Israel itself, but it seems like these attacks are getting more and more dangerous. Middle East expert Daniel Gelach told me why. Of course, um, the Houthis are showing all their military uh, capacities, but uh, I think it's also clear a clear message from Iran that uh, though Iran doesn't want to get involved directly uh, in the Gaza war, uh, it wants to show its uh, potential of deterrence. And of course, the uh, Bab el-Mandat, the area uh, which is like partly in control of the Houthis, is an important strategic place because it's a, it's a strait for international trade. And so is, of course, the Persian Gulf. And uh, this is a reminder that uh, the war can become regional also without direct involvement of Iran. What is the Houthis' intention here? Supporting Hamas in its fight against Israel or sparking a wider conflict? Well, of course, the enmity with Israel is a strategic raison d'etre for the Houthis. Uh, it's part of their claim uh, that Israel is their main enemy, though actually there is, of course, no, 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 no frontier, uh, no uh, direct territorial conflict with, with Israel. But for the Houthis, this is a main strategic target. They want to show the entire Muslim and the Arab world that they're on the side of the Palestinians, and they've said it time and again that uh, Israel is their main enemy. And of course, they see the United States as the main uh, geopolitical patron of Israel. But again, I think uh, they're doing this to support uh, the Iranian force of deterrence in the region and allow Iran not to get directly involved in the conflict because Iran wants to shift the conflict away from the Persian Gulf area, where it's about to normalize with uh, Saudi Arabia and other uh, Gulf states. And it wants to, again, shift uh, the conflict uh, further west. And therefore, uh, the Red Sea and the area around the, around Yemen, around the Bab el-Mandab, is a theater for that kind of confrontation. We have seen in recent days some of the drones and missiles fired from Yemen hit other targets like Egyptian border towns. Could the Houthis cause a wider conflict by accident, by miscalculation? Well, that is theoretically po possible. Uh, we were quite impressed over the last years by the uh, precision strikes of the Houthis in Saudi Arabia, in the Persian Gulf area. But of course, the Houthis remain weak. Uh, this is more of a political signal than a military threat to Israel. Uh, but the, of course, the involvement of the Houthis is a major problem for Saudi Arabia and for other countries that, uh, though they are not on the side of Israel, uh, are not in favor of a major regional escalation. And therefore, the, the, the Houthi attacks are part of this game. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned Iran there, of course, close allies to the Houthis, just like Hezbollah in Lebanon. Are these two attacking Israel because they choose to, to support Iran, or is Tehran actively pulling the strings here? Well, I think Tehran is pulling the strings, but at the same time, of course, uh, Hezbollah has said it clearly that uh, the Gaza war and the uh, operation of October 7, the, the Hamas assault on Israel, uh, is a Palestinian affair. Uh, that was interpreted as a sign that Hassan Nasrallah, the secretary general of Hezbollah, does not want to get involved and does not want to let Hamas uh, command the timetable for a confrontation with Israel. But what I see, what, what's become clear in the last couple of days is that Israel may, however, preempt preemptively attack and not wait for Hezbollah to get involved because the Israeli military doctrine says if uh, Hezbollah increases their military uh, capabilities and have more missiles that they can use to attack Israel, they will. So we better do it preemptively. And I think uh, it is definitely possible that uh, we would see uh, preemptive surprise Israeli strikes on, on, on Hezbollah. This is a realistic scenario. And I see another uh, source of contention and another problem uh, in the West Bank. If the situation, situation in the West Bank escalates, and uh, if, if we see violence erupting around Jerusalem, for example, between settler and militias and uh, Palestinian forces, then I think Hezbollah would feel uh, they have no choice but to intervene. And therefore, uh, this is another very uh, yeah, worrying scenario, apart from what's happening in Gaza.
Yeah. Um, returning to Israel's fight against Hamas, we heard the head of Israel's internal security service say they would eliminate Hamas not only in Israel and the Palestinian territories, but in Lebanon, Turkey and Qatar as well. How achievable a goal is this? Well, look, Israel has recurred um, to targeted assassinations abroad against Hamas operatives and other uh, Palestinian uh, figures that they consider uh, leaders and strength pullers of terrorist attacks. But um, if we take like this threat seriously, that would mean that Israel would have to eliminate, in its own words, several thousands, if not up to 20 or 30,000 Hamas operatives, because this is the estimated strength of Hamas. Of Hamas. And that is a, a, a grim scenario, and I think also a very unrealistic one. If you take into account the fact that for every assassination, for every targeted killing of a Hamas operative or a mass member, several other civilians would certainly uh, be targeted, would certainly die. So this, uh, you can do the math yourself. This is a, a, a grim and, uh, in my view, not very realistic scenario that the uh, international community would comply with. That's Middle East analyst. Daniel Gellach, thank you so much. Thank you, Nicole.